The final official Canon Fazbear Frights book came out about three months ago now. I made summary videos on the first two stories in the book, Prankster and Kids at Play, but when I made it to the third story, I couldn't really find motivation to read it and write a summary video for it. I don't know what it was, I just didn't read it. But just about a week ago, maybe a bit longer than that, I finally decided to read it and took notes of some of the interesting details I found in this story. This is a series I like to do where I read Fast by Fright stories, in most cases stories I haven't read before, and I take note of anything to take away from the stories. Sometimes it's a lore hint, sometimes it's a continuity detail, sometimes it's a gameplay connection, sometimes it's just something I think is interesting enough to mention. At the end of these videos, I discuss a bigger piece of the lore the overall story could be trying to parallel and give extra hints on. So in this video, we're going to be talking about Fine Player 2 and how it may explain one of the missing children. So as always, first of all, we're just going to go over to the regular details that may connect to other things in the series, and at the end, I'm going to talk about the bigger detail that may hint at the overall lore. Number 1. Freddy's Hiding Maze is kinda similar to Corn Maze in FNAF VR. Corn Maze is a huge maze with hiding places for you to hide from Foxy, but you can also peek out of the hiding spots and you can see Foxy out there, but he can't see you. The Hiding Maze is also a maze with hiding spots so you can hide from the Seeker and you can also peek out of the hiding spots and the Seeker still can't see you. It could also be a reference to Mary Jo being connected to Foxy since more often than not she is the Seeker, but more on that at the end of course. Number 2. The Hiding Maze could also partially be a reference to Mazer Size in Security Breach since there's an entrance to Mazer Size through a vent just like the Hiding Maze, though that connection is a little loose. Mazer Size's vent is kind of isn't an entrance to Mazer Size, but rather an exit from Mazer Size and an entrance to the catwalks on top of Monty Golf. There's also a third maze the Hiding Maze could be referencing for the same reason as Mazer Size, but also more reasons than just that. I'll mention that now in number 3 so we have all the maze connections out of the way. Number 3. After Amy leaves Mary Jo at Freddy's, we don't actually see what happens to her, but we are told that she went missing that day after Amy left. In Pizza Party from FNAF VR, the whole level is clearly a maze, but once you know where you're going, it's pretty easy. In Pizza Party, you're trying to make it to your own birthday party, and when you make it there, no one is there. This could be what Amy leaving could be referencing, but once you make it to the end and no one is there, Athens shows up and lures you and kills you. This is exactly what happens to Mary Jo. Amy doesn't find her because she leaves, so Mary Jo has no one around her. Then she goes missing, implying that though she isn't a William murdered missing kid, she still seems to be a representation of a kid in the missing children incident. Also I should mention that the way you get to the end of the maze in Pizza Party, you have to go through a vent just like the entrance to the hiding maze. Number 4. Now going back to where we were, Amy's dad was a high level manager. A high level manager can mean a few things, but one of those things it can mean is CEO. William and Henry are the co-founders of Fazbear Entertainment, and William is more on the business side of the company, so this could be a reference to Amy being a parallel to Michael. Number 5. Mary Jo has a teddy bear in her backpack. Now at first you may think this is a bite victim parallel, and you may be right, but Mary Jo parallels a missing child, and while BV5 is a theory some people believe, I don't, but even if BV5 were true, it wouldn't be Mike's fault that he goes missing. And in this story, it is the fault of the Mike parallel, because under BV5, the missing children incident happened before the bite, and if Mike's mistake resulted in his brother's death once, there is no way he would have made that mistake again with the bite. So it seems like one of the missing kids is one of Mike's friends, and the teddy bear could give us a clue as to which one. But again, more on that later. It's also possible that it's a double parallel, but who knows. It's also mentioned that this incident happened in May, while the missing children incident was in summer. Or maybe the FNAF 1 newspapers are referring to a different event and that Save Them happened in summer. I'm not saying the FNAF 1 newspapers are talking about Save Them, but maybe both did, but the original Missing Children incident happened in May. Who knows, but May has been mentioned quite a lot in these Fast Bear Fright stories, so the month seems important. At least to me. Number 6. The incident with Mary Jo seems to be referencing the first Missing Children incident. 
but certain aspects of it may connect with the incident in FNAF 1. I talked about this incident in another video, but I don't think the FNAF 1 newspapers are talking about the original MCI. I think they're referring to the missing children incident that happened at the FNAF 1 location. It's heavily hinted at in the Ultimate Guide that there was an incident there, and it would make sense that in the newspaper from FNAF 1 we are being told about the FNAF 1 murders. And maybe Fine Player 2 is trying to tell us that. You see, FNAF VR confirms that William was arrested, but nothing was ever proven in a court of law, meaning he wasn't convicted. But back in FNAF 1, we're told that someone was caught on the cameras and was convicted. You may think this means the FNAF 1 newspapers aren't exactly reliable because of this, which is possible, but then if we cut to this story we have a man go into a maze with children and then one of those children going missing, and then he goes to prison but he was wrongfully accused. It could be trying to say that what happened in those FNAF 1 newspapers did actually happen, but maybe they were regarding a different event rather than the original missing children incident. And it does make sense that in FNAF 1 incident they get the wrong guy, because more kids go missing even after that guy is caught on camera and goes to prison. This is hinted at in the newspapers where two children go missing and then some guy was arrested and convicted, but then there's three more missing kids after the guy is already convicted. So it seems like they got the wrong guy, but with the original missing children incident, they didn't get the wrong guy. They got William, they just couldn't convict him because they couldn't find the bodies. Number 7. The main portion of this story takes place 10 years after Mary Jo goes missing. Based on other events in the story, this could imply that FNAF 1 is 10 years after the Missing Children incident. And since FNAF 1 is in 1993, that would place the game version of the Missing Children incident in 1983, not 1985. But that's still heavily debated throughout the community. I don't want to try to like get into those arguments and stuff. I kind of believe both. I believe that it's in 83, but after the bite. But a lot of people believe otherwise, who knows. Uh, I don't know, I'm just a dude theorizing, so leave me alone. Number 8. Amy had a recurring nightmare about the incident with Mary Jo. This can be used as further proof that Amy is meant to parallel Mike, since that is what happened to Mike. He has nightmares because of what he did to the bite victim. Obviously those nightmares are most likely meant to be the bite victim torturing him, but it still definitely seems like a connection. Number 9. Another thing that can prove that is the fact that Amy and her mom look very much alike, which could be a reference to Mike and William looking similar, which is talked about in Sissa location. Father, it's me, Michael. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. Number 10. Amy goes out literally searching for the man who kidnapped her friend. This is clearly a reference to Mike looking for William, and again, something I'll talk more about at the end of the video, maybe Mike investigated the murders at Freddy's because one of his friends went missing in the missing children incident. Number 11. When Amy is following Tucker, he turns into a narrow and rural road. I don't know if it's just me, but it reminds me of how in Midnight Motorist, we're driving down in a regularly busy street and then go down a hole, seeming to imply we turn onto a different road, and that street ends up being in a forest with n little to no buildings around besides juniors. And at a certain point it gets even narrower. And of course orange guy is William Afton, and while Emmett Tucker was wrongfully accused, he still is in certain ways a stand-in for William. It's also worth mentioning that while Amy is following Tucker, it is raining just like it is in Midnight Motorist. Number 12. At a point while tailing Tucker, a random crow lands on Amy's car, but then it flies away into a nearby cornfield. The reason I find this suspicious is that in Corn Maze from FNAF VR, crows can appear on the ground, alerting Foxy to your location if you step on them. It could be a meaningless detail, but I just thought it was worth mentioning since it's so random, and it's a crow that goes into a cornfield, and we see crows in Corn Maze and Help One. I just thought that was weird. Could just mean nothing, I just wanted to mention it. Number 13. A restaurant called Flo's Fabulous Eatery was built over Freddy's. A similar thing happened in the novel trilogy where we, a mall is built over Freddy's. Since this book came out about a month and a half before Security Breach did, this could have been an early hint at a Freddy's location being underneath the mall, which is also hinted at by the novel trilogy having a similar storyline to the Security Breach with certain aspects. Number 14. So far throughout this video, I've been talking about how Mary Jo is meant to represent one of Mike's friends being in the missing children incident. And obviously I said it around I think the third detail, and I'm sure you all have been screaming at me that the story isn't about the missing children incident. 
At the end of the story, it's revealed that Mary Jo wasn't killed by anyone. The hiding maze is so poorly designed that you can't actually get out of the hiding spots in the maze without the seeker actually finding you or giving up. Since Amy never found Mary Jo or gave up, her door never opened, and she died due to the lack of food and water and being trapped in there. And since they were the last players at the hiding maze, no one else came into play, and so nobody found her. So no, the story doesn't show a missing children incident, but I do still think it's meant to represent one of the missing children. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how the overall story could be telling us the story of Michael and one of the missing children. Just think about it. The story of Susie was explained in The Fourth Closet, Fruity Maze, and Toy Chica the High School Years. The story of Jeremy was hinted at in the Comedy Boss show in the Fazbear Theater and Security Breach. Aren't parents the worst? Any of you kids have parents. Don't you hate it when your parents take you somewhere fun and abandon you? They are all like, I guess if I dump little Jeremy off at his favorite pizzeria before I move to Aruba, that makes me a good parent. The story of Gabriel was explained in Pizza Party from FNAF VR. There's only two missing children left whose stories have not yet been completely explained, Cassidy and Fritz, but more so Fritz. This story tells the story of a Mike parallel and her friend going missing. This seems to apply that one of Mike's friends is a missing child. The only friends of Mike's we see in the series are the bullies from FNAF 4, so we can conclude that one of these bullies is part of the MCI, and there's a few things that may be able to pinpoint which one. First of all, Mary Jo in this story has a teddy bear. This could be saying that Mary Jo is a bite victim parallel, but the bite victim didn't go missing, unless you be believe BV5. But even if you do, the bite victim going missing would have had nothing to do with Mike, though this story implies that this kid going missing is partially Mike's fault. That would mean Mary Jo isn't a bite victim parallel. I mean, like I said, you could say it's just a double parallel, and I wouldn't argue with that, but I think there's a better option here. A teddy bear is obviously a bear, I mean it's in the name. And who's the main bear character throughout the whole series? Freddy, obviously. Which of the bullies is connected to Freddy? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, the Freddy bully. And there's a few other things here to connect the f to the Freddy bully as well. In the Bite minigame from FNAF 4, all the bullies have glowing eyes except the Freddy bully. This could be to show that the Freddy bully is different from the rest of them in some way, because he is an MCI kid, well, the rest are not. At the beginning of the story, Mary Jo is also stated to have a weird laugh, which could be a reference to the Laughing Kid outside Fredbear's in the FNAF 4 minigames. And the Laughing Kid seems to be the same kid as the Freddy Bully. So is it possible that the Freddy Bully is Fritz, aka the victim who possesses Foxy? Like I said, the Freddy Bully doesn't have glowing eyes, possibly to show that he is unique, and that could also explain Foxy's unique mechanics. Now I know what you're thinking, why would the Freddy Bully possess Foxy and not Freddy? And to that I say two things. First of all, Gabriel is 7 when he dies, as seen in Help Wanted's Pizza Party. That doesn't line up with the Freddy Bully, since he would be around double that age. And second of all, it actually would make sense. Think about it, if Mike is friends with Fritz, it would explain why he uses the name Fritz in FNAF 2. In FNAF 2, you also wear a Freddy mask, just like the Freddy Bully in FNAF 4, and Mike originally wore a Foxy mask. Do you see where I'm going here? Mike started off wearing a Foxy mask, then pretended to be Fritz and wore a Freddy mask. If Fritz is the Freddy bully, at the beginning of the FNAF timeline, he starts off wearing a Freddy mask and ends up being Foxy. It's like a role reversal, kind of. And finally, one last thing I want to talk about is how this could explain Mike's motivation. It's definitely possible that after Mike's friend Fritz went missing, he eventually decides to work at FNAF 2 in order to investigate, only to find that William is the one who killed the kids. Then in FNAF 1, 10 years after the missing children incident, he works at the next Freddy's location to continue investigating, which is also likely where he realized the animatronics were possessed, due to the It's Me line spoken by the bite victim, his brother. I do believe Freddy bullies Fritz, but if the missing children incident is actually before the bite of 83, which I don't think it is, but let's just say that it were, it's possible that the Freddy bully becomes someone else, like Toy Freddy or something. But no matter what, I do think the Freddy bully went missing, died, and caused Mike to get suspicious and go work at FNAF 2, whether he becomes Foxy or not. But anyways, that pretty much wraps up the theory. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, then please do leave a like and subscribe. I realize that this theory will be a little controversial because it deals with when the missing children incident takes place. If you believe the missing children incident is before the bite of 83, then this theory doesn't work. But even if you do believe it is before the bite of 83, like I said, there's still the possibility that the, that the Freddy bully becomes someone else. But no matter what you believe, I hope you still manage to enjoy the video itself. 
I did obviously talk about other details in this video, so have a think about those. But anyways, I'm going to end the video there, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys! I did obviously talk about other details in this video, so have a think about those. No matter what you believe, I hope you still manage to enjoy the video itself. I did obviously talk about other details in this video, so have a think about those. F***ing Christ, why can't I say the word those?